ray gun off safety. My girl so tasty. Tell her it's your world. She want the two tone spaceship. Blow smoke screen daily, so the stress don't face me. I'm going. I keep it factual. I'm on sabbatical. I'm out in Central America. I need a break from hysteria. Park like the one with the carousel. I get it lit in your area. I'm locked to the vision, it couldn't be clear. You couldn't pay me to care enough. I dare you to hate me, supreme with the sound through the stereo. So turn it up loud when you hearing us. We live and it's good in your area. My mama proud, she tearing up and it's going down. Got your girl aroused by these massive stacks like a hundred pounds. Running big laps till the sun is down like a hundred miles. Tenant frames on me, leaning down. I'm winning now. Been a while, you ain't like me then. NCAA College Basketball 2K3. One of the rarest and most expensive games available for the GameCube still to this day. It's also the only college basketball game to ever come out for the GameCube. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Uncle Sands Reject here, and welcome back to the channel, boys. And we are back with another blast from the past. I guess we could call it, man, with another older NCAA sports game, man. One of my favorite game series out there, the College Hoops 2K series now. In its infancy, you know what I mean? The game was still pretty good. It was better, a little bit better than March Madness in my opinion. But you know, when it came to like the Sega and the 2K way of doing things on the sticks, it kind of threw a lot of people off because it was a huge learning curve from what we were used to with EA Sports. Now with the last entry being College Hoops 2K8, it is highly regarded as the best college basketball game ever created. But this is the first game in the series and it helps set the tone for what we all know and love with 2K8, man. So let's go ahead and check this one out today. Now, according to a list done by RetroDodo.com, out of 10 GameCube games that are secretly worth a fortune, it is ranked number four out of 10. The game was produced in 2002. Of all the surprising entries on our rare GameCubes list, the appearance of a Sega college basketball game is perhaps the most astonishing. Though not the only basketball game available, this game was the only college basketball game for the GameCube, and due to its limited print run, it is undoubtedly one of the rarest titles for the system. Now, College Hoops 2K3 was produced for GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, but the game is only limited on Xbox and Rare. You know, you can find it all over the place for Xbox and PS2. I actually have a copy for both systems as well, and I have it on my emulators. That's what we're actually running it on today on GameCube. But you can see here, NCAA College Basketball 2K3 was the only title in the series to appear on the GameCube, as well as being the GameCube's only college basketball game. The GameCube version of the game was released in limited quantities. It is now considered one of the rarest titles available for the system. Now let's take a look on pricecharting.com. Just to buy the game loose without a case, you're gonna be spending upwards of you know 115 or higher. To buy the game complete, you pay, two, you pay about 260 to 263. If you get it graded, it's about $1,700. A brand new sealed, factory sealed, $628. Just to buy the box alone, $92. And for the manual only, you're gonna have to spend $100 for this game. Get out of here, man, shit, I'm saying. Now let's jump into this game, specifically on the main menu. Now, just like any sports game, you got your team rosters, you create a player, create a playbook, nothing special going on with college, you know, unless you were able to get online and download one of the rosters, put on like operation sports and stuff like that. Yes, you can get uh, created rosters way back then. Take a look at the game modes they have here. They got the regular exhibition, which, you know, for those of you guys who are probably younger than me, you're probably not really used to having to play people during, you know, doing couch play. You're used to hopping online and playing people, finding games. Back in the day, man, it wasn't always that simple, that easy, or that reliable. Next up, you got the season mode. You'll just run one season with a team. You can also run a full NCAA tournament. And then also, you know, from the full NCAA tournament, you could just run conference tournaments as well. So that's actually pretty, pretty dope. And then of course you got the legacy mode, which, you know, the legacy mode is, you know, uh, basically a dynasty opposed to just a regular season. You could do a career mode where, you know, you can only accept job offers from schools that are actually hiring, or you could do an open legacy, you know, just like 2K8, where you could pick whatever school you want. You got a practice mode, you got a gym rat mode, which is basically like the black top, you know what I'm saying, for the college sports. So 2K, you know, has always pretty much had certain aspects in their game since the beginning of time. So also with the legacy mode, which you'll see here back in way back in 2002, this wasn't a normal thing because I don't think March Madness for EA Sports had it back then. Um, you can have players leaving early for the NBA and I will, I wanna say that you could export draft classes on this, but that wasn't a new concept. All right, boys, so we're starting the legacy mode here just to see how things are. Right here, you create your coach. 
you'll select the type of coaching style that your that your coach has you could be a fast break team you could be a half court team you could be a fundamental team you could be you know over the top team you could be team focused you could be star focused you want to go short bench you want to go deep bench you want to be an offensive team defensive team physical or finesse inside or out you know so back then you know it's just crazy how old how how deep older games were really were willing to go when it came to these game modes welcome to the ncaa college basketball 2k3 legacy begin your career as a head coach and build your team into a perennial powerhouse during the season scout top high school picks to gain key information and increase their interest to level your school you can even check out recruits in a series of all-star games then in the offseason recruit top players to fill out open slots left by graduating players you can even save your graduating players to use them in Sega Sports NBA 2K3. So I was right. You could export draft classes, you know, in the, in the very first game in the series. So here in the preseason, we already went over our coaching style, right? So, you know, we already went over that. We set that. You can set up your schedule difficulty. So they had custom schedules back then, which is uh, super duper dope. You could change the difficulty by hitting the Y button. You can put increase difficulty, decrease difficulty, reset difficulty. We'll say increase. We're going to increase it until, until we can't um, increase anymore. Maybe it'll stop. But you see all the games are changing here. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. And then we're going to go ahead and move forward. All right, boys. So I simulated the week a little bit. I don't know exactly which week the recruits became available, but I did have to simulate quite a ways. We are 20 games into the season. But coming down here, management, scouting, you know, you got all the recruits in the nation. So, you know, they tell you their years of eligibility. So I'm unsure if, if there are Juco players or not in this. Um, quite possible that there could be. There usually are in college games. Let's take a look at the recruiting map. It tells you per state how many players are in each state. Uh, so, for instance, let's say Cap Oregon has 21. The state of Georgia has 25 recruits. Florida has 18. Cali has 16. Only two in the state of Alaska. There was another state that had about 29 recruits. It was probably a up north state. Ohio had 25. There was PA. PA has 29. New Jersey, my home state, we got 18. Let's take a look at them right quick. So it doesn't look like they necessarily have stars on the players. But, you know, the whole key to this is to recruit these players to see exactly, you know, who they are, what they are, and, and, and what it is they do. So you can scout three players a week. We're going to go ahead and scout Ralph Head. So he is a five-star player. I can't. Yeah, okay, five-star player. Defensive specialist, biases, a lot of playing time, visits and calls, a winning program. We're North Carolina. We can pretty much handle all of that. So, oh, so this is my region. So New Jersey region, but looks like they're actually, he's actually from New York. Oh, okay, okay. So basically like the mid-Atlantic region, but he's actually from New York. Okay, I actually, uh, that's actually pretty cool. But you can actually go to the actual states by the menu. Oh, I like that. I like that. So we're going to go ahead and scout him right here. He's a four-star, another big man. Biases, visits, and calls, a good coach or a reputable school. We are indeed that. And then we're going to look at Charlie Millar. And then he's a four-star defensive specialist. He wants to be close to home, a reputable school, and a lot of playing time. Now you can also see here they have a South High School All-Star game. So you can play as South 1 and South 2. So here in the middle of the season, you can jump in to take a look at some of these recruits and to see how well they'll fit into your program. So now you can come over here to the scouted screen on your recruits. Um, it doesn't really say what schools they're interested in just yet. Oh, okay, I see. Never mind. So once you scout a player, you scout them. There's nothing else you can do. Now, what about, so how do we actually recruit them is my question. Like, do we do we have to wait till the off season to actually recruit them? So are we just now scouting players just to see how they would fit in our school? We got another five-star defensive specialist. I wanna see, if, I wanna find like an office, there we go. So Anthony Harris is gonna be an offensive threat, four-star, wants to be at a winning program, close to home visits and calls. And then we'll go to Georgia to Rodney Walters. He has four years of eligibility. We're scouting, he's a four-star, all-around threat. He wants a good coach, visits and calls close to home. And then now we're just going to, now you can see here, we got the Southeast All-Star game. So this is actually pretty dope and crazy how in depth this was. Is it as realistic as like, you know, what they do in real life? No, but they, they're just adding an extra oomph, you know what I'm saying, to like, you know, what is already a, a pretty deep mode when, back when franchise really matter. Take a look at the uh, Naismith Player of the Year. It's going to be Jeremiah Howard from FIU. He averaged nine, seven, and three. That'll make sense to me. 
the wooden player of the year. Ten. Yeah, I think it's because my uh, my simulation, my 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 minutes per game are only on ten instead of twenty. So that would make sense. Then they have a Sega Sports Award. They got the Coach of the Year. You know, what I mean, that's Tom Izzo. It says Orion Harvey, but of course, you know, we had to create names. Let's go ahead and advance. Um, let's take a look. So do they have, I wonder if they have like the uh, selection Sunday. Oh, so first we got to advance to the conference tournament. So we got the uh, conference tree here. Did we make the conference tournament? Okay, there we go. We played Virginia. We did make the conference tournament. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say simulate all. Hopefully we can win. We play Virginia, simulate game. We got blown out 56-29. Oh, my goodness. But this is 0-2, man. You know, UNC, we came off of it. We, we had some pretty tough years back then, simulating remaining tournament games. Doesn't look like they have the actual Selection Sunday. That's a lie. This looks like a Selection Sunday. I can't hear. Let me turn up the volume here. We're going to go ahead and simulate the playing game. I didn't realize they had a playing game back in, 20, back in 2002, bro. Am I that old? Let's go ahead and simulate all. Are we in a game? But that was actually, it looks like they got some type of presentation and stuff like that uh, when it comes to, to this. Like, I had this game, bro. I did have this game, but I don't remember. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't remember. Like, I was 12 when this game came out. 2002, I was 12 years old, bro. And, I, you know, I turned 13 at the end of the year in December. So, I'm 32 now. This is literally 20 years later, me playing this game. And it's bringing back a lot of nostalgia and a lot of good things. Can we beat FAU? We do. So we'll go ahead and simulate again. We advance to play the 11 C Alabama. They blew us out. That's going to be the end of the tournament. Tournament MVP is going to be the small forward from UCLA. Is that Troy Murphy? That could be Troy Murphy. I don't know who was, or is that Jason Capono? I think, I think, number, let me see. I think this is Jason Capono, bro. And we're going to look it up. Jason Capono, one of my favorite players of all time. He's not the greatest player of all time, but like, 2K wise, Mwah. and yes, that is Jason Capono because he was drafted in 2003 by the Cavs. Okay, he wins uh, most outstanding player in the national championship score was 28 to 24. Let's advance to the offseason. We're going to be losing number 44 and number 14. I'm trying to think, is this um, 2002? It's not Sean May, Rashad McCann. I'm trying to think who these guys were. Can't remember, you know, what I mean, off the top of my head. You know, I, I I know my guys, but I just really can't think of it. Go ahead and advance. We reset everything except new coach settings. This is where we want to see. This is where we can recruit, locate recruits, continue recruiting players. Now, we're not in anybody's top a lot. <laughs> we're in Raul's top three schools, but then it says top. I don't get this. What are we doing here? So the only players this we're we're very high on is gonna be Raul Raul Ocasio because you know he'll be able to play here. Um, what is that? Does it say he's a ninety? What is it? What is what's a ninety? Oh, it's interesting school. Very high as a ninety. Uh, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Bloomfield, New Jersey. Also, just known for having uh, some pretty good big men. Uh, shout out to North Jersey. We'll go ahead and recruit him. We can have a head coach call, assistant coach call. We only get hundred points this off season. Looks like. We'll go ahead and use that on him. Already spent points on him. We'll go to high. We're not in anybody's uh, top three here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go after this four-star Wales, Thomasville, North Carolina. I actually uh, have been there. I got family in North Carolina. Go ahead and recruit him. Now let's just advance to week because I just want to. I just want you know we don't have to recruit everybody to see. Here's a recap of week one. Ready to commit? Nobody committed. Nobody recruited. Targets. Um, we don't move up on Wells's list. I think we should be able to, though. Oh, no, we do. We move up. We're not in this top three, but we're in this top four behind Charlotte Davidson and Wake. Probably didn't think we were interested. So does that mean we can't recruit him again? Oh, no, that's just a recap. My apologies. So look, look at me learning. Recruit again. This time, head coach visit. Oh, so you get, you get a bunch of points every week. Oh, I'm used to points not replenishing in some games. Um, i.e. NCAA basketball 10. So I get very cautious about the points that I use. Go ahead and advance the week once again, and we'll get our recap. I actually like, <clears throat> excuse me, what they're doing here. Ready to commit, nobody committed, nobody recruited. Not really focusing on our targets here. Um, top three schools. Oh, no, we actually do not get Raul Ocasio. He commits to Maryland. And then Jason Wells actually commits to Virginia Tech. All right, so... 
week two of five, we missed the two guys we're actually going after. But, you know, we, we pretty much know how it would go, you feel me, if we were to actually recruit them. Do we have anybody else on our list that is actually, you know, semi wanting to come here? Take a look at our targets. Take a look at who's available. Um, how do I look at it by interest? There we go. We got some high interest. Not a lot of high caliber caliber stars. I just want to get somebody to. I just want to get somebody to commit. Is what is what I'm trying to do, just to see like you know, exactly how it goes. All right, so let's go really hard after a one star here. I didn't do anything. Let's go really hard after a one star here. See if we can get them to commit over whatever school is already like really really going hard after them. Probably not because you know I didn't really go a whole season of recruiting. But you know we could pretty much get the gist. You know what I'm saying of like of like how recruiting would go and look we jump up to his top to his top list he's already very very much so committed and he's probably gonna be ready to sign next week of course as a unc coach if i was to do this you know as a full series or something like that i wouldn't be going after a one star i shouldn't have to go after a one star um players ready to commit no one we're still top of tommy parada's list do i have to actually offer him i'm not sure it doesn't it doesn't say it doesn't give me an option to uh, to offer him. So that's week five of five recruiting recap. And there are recruits who wish to commit. Okay, so they let you know. Ready to commit. Uh, is, this, is this all the players ready to commit? Ready to commit? Did I mess it up? I think I messed it up. Okay, 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 okay. Yes. So these are the people ready to commit to our school. Even though we're not in their top three, we didn't go hard after them. So that's actually pretty interesting to see. You see Tommy Parade. So the, basically, the gist is to have their interest at least three quarters of the way, or maybe a little bit more if you want to say, and then that'll have them ready to commit to your school. You can have the pick of the litter from there. You place them on their team. We got one. We got a two-star. Then we're going to go get the one-star that we just really, really went hard after. You see my controller isn't working. I am on PC, by the way. I didn't, I didn't spend $150 on a 20-year-old game. That's just not me. I would never do that. <laughs> You dig what I'm saying? So we go ahead and advance here. We lost those dudes. We got Parada, and then we'll advance to the regular season. And then, you know, it's a loop. We do it all again. 2003 to 2004 season is ready to go. And you guys know we can't get out of here without having some gameplay, boys. And being a UNC fan, we got to come out here and go up against Duke. Um, we're going to be at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill. Let's come out here and get a dub, baby. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. We're coming to you live from the Center, home of the North Carolina Tar Heels. It's NCAA basketball here on the ESPN Sports Network. I'm John Ireland. With me is Tim Nebrit. Before we get to the tip-off, let's meet the players. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention courtside for the player introductions. First, for the Duke Blue Devils. At guard, six foot one, Kent Bogans. Also at guard, at six feet four inches. Olu Hill. At forward, six foot six, Shane Green. Also at forward, at six feet, 10 inches, Al Damon. At center, at 6'11", Anthony Hannon. And their head coach, Greg Shannon. And now, the starting lineup. For the Tar Heels of North Carolina. At guard, six foot two. We're at number three. All right, boys, before we jump into it, before we jump into it, I don't know what I'm doing. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at the controller setup. And I'm on a GameCube controller. I haven't used a GameCube controller in ages, bro. So 2K usually used to have like some very, very weird things about them. So let's just make sure we're good. You can analog pass, but you know, turbo is the is the right trigger. Post up is a left trigger. You control with the analog stick. That's cool. Dribble moves are X, which would be circle. Shoot is B, which would be square, which 2K was one of the first games that introduced square as a shoot button. Um, you call a play with Y, and okay, this is pretty easy. This is pretty easy. Then you're going over some things. Take a look at the alternating <clears> of <throat> what you could do. So back then when I used to play 2K, what I would do is I would usually make the I would usually make dribble move circle, and I would make um I mean, I'm excuse me. I would make the dribble move square and I would make the shoot button circle, which is B and X because on NBA live, that's how it was. So that's how EA sports had it. We were all used to playing EA sports. So we pretty much just made it, you know, easier that we, where we could understand. But since I'm used to playing 2K more so now, you know, a college troops 2K and everything like that, we're going to rock out with this standard setup. All right, boys, here we go. This is when Sean May and Rashad McCance and all them boys were freshmen. All right, so you, you jump with square. You jump with, with, with B. That's what was weird about 2K. I remember that now. So you back down with that. Dribble moves with this. Oh, turnover. I'm not on the hardest difficulty. I'm on the middle setting. There's three settings. It's like starter, all all conference, and all American. Um, you know, I'm on all conference. And, you know, whatever whatever we do, though, I'm not here to lose the Duke as I go down 4 nothing. We're only playing three-minute ass, man, so... We need to get it together, bro. I call for pick with Z, right? Let me get one. Let me uh pump fake. No, that's not a good shot. It might be in 2003. <laughs> 2002 is a good shot, baby. Let's go, man. You gotta remember some older games back then, so it's still a little bit of uh, still a little bit of you know like you know like arcadeness to every game. You know what I mean? Like this sim, but it's not as sim as like what we see now. So that's a good block from my man's. Let's go. How do you steal? You steal. You steal with circle. Okay. Good day. We out of here. We out of here, baby. Oh, hey. Oh, you gotta bang that. Oh, let's go. There's no icon pass on this old game, but we got about to get a dunk. No, we're not. We're gonna get two points though. Two points is two points. They all count the same. We did throw a lob though, so I'm happy about that. Let's lock in. Let's lock up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 I'm here. I didn't mean to call a play. Give me that. Ah, jump early. All these shots are super duper high arcing, bro. 41 seconds in a quarter. There's no icon passing. That's the crazy thing. You got to roll after the pick. High pick and roll, high pick and roll. Why is my guard setting the pick for me? Oh, let's, see what, let's see what the post work is like. He didn't dribble. Give me the ball. Knock it down. Oh, way downtown. But, but, oh, we got to knock it down, baby. So one thing about the, the buttons, they're not super duper responsive. Like you have to make sure your guy catches the ball. Then you got to press the button. Like you can't be pre-pressing the button like you do like uh, right now in 2K. But we, we, got it. we got the final shot. Boom. Let me get a screen. Actually set a good screen too. There, there we go. Oh, that's a good look. That's a good look. Bang. Let's go. Let's see if they got a halftime show like all the other two older 2K games. You know what I mean? Take a look at the players that I have. Like, you know, excuse me, not like Dick Vitale or anything like that. You know, that would be dope if they was able to pull him off. But, no, that's going to do it for the halftime. This game, like, like most 2K games, bro, it plays well still to this day. Like a lot of 2K games hold up. You know, for the most part, ooh, good putback. Sometimes they can be clunky, though. Like 2K8. It's still kind of clunky, like when you compare it to 2K, uh, when you compare it to NCAA Basketball 10. Oh, good pass. Finish the hey, get banged on, baby. Let's go, man. That's what we want to see. Hey, man, we got to pull out this dub, bro. I don't like losing to Duke in basketball, man. We don't like losing to Duke. Just like in football, I don't like losing to uh, the bum ass shoe. We here, good D, good D. Good D, good D. That's off. We out of here. Boom, look up. Two minutes, under two minutes. I see you down low. No three in the key. Good. Oh, and one. All right. Is this the stupid 2K free throws with RB with, with the two uh triggers? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, these controllers ain't responsive enough for this, bro. Th these are like pe like cheap PC GameCube controllers I got. You gotta you gotta get them to go to go together. So I'm gonna just shoot it. You gotta get those two. Uh, like if you guys never played, you gotta get those two arrows to go together with the triggers, and then you gotta try to like line them up with the basket, and then you'll shoot it. So we don't get three the hard way. We actually missed out on the opportunity. Good D. Oh, good pump fake, bro, bro. I see you, Peter. His name's not Peter. That definitely says points per half. <laughs> So we got to hope for an offensive board, bro. We missed all three shots, bro. That's trash, man. That's trash, bro. Give me that. Ah, come on, man. If we can hit free throws, bro, this is a tie ball game right now. So I get a hold by a cheap controller and I actually, the one the one of the few times the emulator actually doesn't show me love. You see the cross in there? Ah, in the shot? Let's go, baby. Make up for it, Summers. Make up for it, Summers. Yeah. Yeah. Good D. Good D. Nowhere. No. Come on. They're probably going to hold for one. We got to steal those. Good D, Brax. Let's go. We hold it for one. This is where we want to be. No. Give the ball to Summers, man. <laughs> come on, bro. Hey. Hey. I'm about to get busy on the pause. Can I call ISO? We good. We good. We good. Y'all know what's coming. You know what's coming. Ah, went for the win, man. Oh, we had a we had a guard on us. We got it. We got to recognize the double team there. I recognized it, but I thought we can kill it. Ah, well, oh, they went for the steal. Open shot for Summers. We got to get boards. Go and that's no. That is a bell out, bro. Get that. Let me get that. Let me get that screen. He goes underneath. He's silly. Gotta gotta knock that down, kid. Oh my goodness. We good though. We good. We good. Oh, we throw it. It don't matter if they call it foul. We wouldn't have made it. Oh, they are. They showing out, bro. They are. Oh my. Our, the point guard got two points, but he got nine assists, bro. This man got ten points. Twelve total. Yeah, they just turned it up on us, bro. They're just better. They wanted it more. We were actually worse than Duke this year and won, bro. What do we have to do, bro? Way downtown. Nope. All right, man. So that's going to do it for the game. We end up losing to the Duke Bum Devils, man. Golly. But this was Sean May and them were freshmen. We actually had a very, very rough season when they were freshmen, bro. Player of the games, that big man killed us. Five for eight, two assists, eight rebounds, one block. You name it, he did it on the court. Uh, we shot 36% from the field to their 77. That's really the game right there. Uh, points to the paint, 22 to 10. We, we created more turnovers. like We forced more turnovers and everything, man. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, man. And a look back at this game 20 years later. The rarest and only college football, college basketball game for the GameCube, man. If you guys got more games in mind, especially college games, let me know. Stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy Uncle Sam's Reject, RKGames.com. I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> niggas want me to lose, but I can't. I've been stacking this shit to the ceiling. Know some niggas with bodies, and it ain't no probably. We never speak on them killers. Everybody on my block, go get them some money. It's only a couple of drillers. I've been fucking them hoes, man. Them bitches ain't nobody.